Am I wrong for refusing to pay for Christmas dinner when I'm not hosting? Story time. So I do Christmas with my husband's family every single year and each year we change up who is hosting. And I'm pregnant this year so we decided that my sister-in-law and her partner would host. My partner Steve have always said that they are not the best cook so we're not really looking forward to the dinner that much. And we did offer to help them with the cooking. They always, always overcook the vegetables and there's nothing worse than a rubbery carrot. So despite knowing that I was gonna have to politely enjoy the food and not say that I actually really hate it. I was quite looking forward to going until my sister-in-law, who we will call Amy, calls my Steve and asks when we're gonna take her shopping to get Christmas groceries. For a little bit of added context here, me and Steve both lost our jobs not too long ago and we're both on food stamps at the moment. And Amy asked if we could have 200 pounds worth of food stamps from our little stash. And please bear in mind that Amy and her family and my Steve's sister are really quite wealthy, like they do not need our help. I said, you can tell her, absolutely not. Even if I wanted to help out, I couldn't. I'm pregnant. We need this money for when our baby comes. And also, you're hosting. You pay. Then, next thing I know, I've got bloody mother-in-law on the phone asking to give up just like £100 worth of food stamps to help pay for it. Billy, please get the vibe. And also, why would I give any money to people who can't cook? It's gonna be a bad meal. They definitely have the means to pay for it themselves as well. And then my mother-in-law dropped the absolute bombshell on me. Darling mother-in-law. The cocoa bar for the office. Turns around to me and says, well, maybe you should give some up because you need to stop eating so much anyway. Bitch, I'm pregnant. She then went on to blabber about how she was upset that she now had to give the 200 pound and how that was all my fault. So I think now I've just decided that I'm not actually going to go. Like me and Steve will just stay at our house and we'll just have a cute little day together. But the problem is, is that Steve really wants to spend Christmas Day with his family, of course. So, but I let bygones be bygones or should I stand my ground here? What do you think? I'm going to end up on a Ohio State bar stool and maybe the rest of the internet. I apologize for what you are about to read and see when it comes out. I'm so sorry, but I have to get this off my chest and try and explain myself before I become known as the Ohio State tree so this morning around 6 30 i came back to campus i live off high street but don't have class on mondays and spent the long weekend home deciding to wake up early and commute back today i didn't want to fall back asleep because i have an 8 a.m so i was hanging out on the oval sitting on one of the trees to the right of the thompson statue its branches are a little lower and i was using it kind of as a bench to sit on at first then just sat down next to the tree on my backpack there was a hole in it and i kind of started poking my fingers in it some water squirted out and and I don't know what got into me, but I started really going at it. <laughs> With his fingers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he was finger f***ing a tray. It squirted again, and I might have moaned <laughs> and went to l it and all of a sudden I heard a little scream and I turned around and there were three girls staring at me with their phones out recording. It's the three of us. <laughs> I wish I saw this in person. And I was there on my knees hugging the tree with my tongue in the tree hole. I swear I looked around and there was nobody there before I started. I don't know where the girls came from. I want to apologize and please if you have the video do not post it anywhere. I'm literally begging you. I'm considering going to Ohio State Student Legal to negate the fallout damage if the video does come out because I'm so scared. I will literally pay you to not post it. If you have the video, DM and we can work something out so my life isn't ruined. I like how he <laughs> prefaces it with like a whole story. I was at my mom's house for the whole weekend. Yeah. I went to church. <laughs> had I went to I went to the soup kitchen, yes. you know, Took donated. I gave some blood. I donated plasma. <laughs> Overall, I'm a really good person. Anyways, I was tree and it was turning me on i like how he said i'm not a tree fucker and he absolutely is you're just in a on-campus tree and you think that you deserve the right to explain you can't yourself? sue anyone for that they should sue you for emotional <laughs> <drama>. damage <laughs> You know, there are like squirrels in a tree hole. They're like what's he doing our home i'm scared i'm scared you guys <laughs> 
story time about how my husband left me for my twin brother. I, female, 25, have been married to my husband for six months. When we started dating, it was just casual. I never thought I would marry this man, but it happened. We had a pregnancy scare, and that's when he told me that if I was pregnant, that he would marry me. We took a few pregnancy tests, and most of them came out positive. So we were convinced we were having a kid together. Of course, he asked me to marry him, and not until three months later did we decide to go to the doctor. And as soon as we got to the doctor, they said, you're not pregnant. He couldn't believe it. But nonetheless, we were married a gay man, and that he was possibly having an affair with my twin brother? I mean, could things get worse? I decided to confront my husband. What he told me literally shocked me. Part three is up. Story time about how my husband left me for my twin brother. When I confronted my husband. He told me that my brother essentially had been following him around and wouldn't leave him alone. In other words, he was putting all the blame on my brother. But instead of believing him right away, I grilled him. I started asking him questions about his past, like why he had never had a relationship before me with another woman, why all of my friends, literally all of them, thought he was gay. Of course, he denied everything, so I got on the phone and called my brother. I asked him to come over really quick and he did. And of course I started interrogating him too. That's when I told my husband to repeat what he had told me. But he couldn't. He looked at my brother and said, sorry, I told her the truth. My brother said, which is? And my husband says, you won't leave me alone and that you've been harassing me. That's when my brother tried to swing at him. Then my brother spilled all the beans. He said that on my wedding night, my husband and him made out. And that after that, my brother would come to our house after I left every single morning to be with my husband and to do all the nasty things they wanted to do to each other. My brother told me that the one who started it was my husband. I looked at my husband and he couldn't deny anything. I divorced him the next day. My now ex is trying to convince my brother to be in a relationship with him, but he doesn't want to. And my dad is hunting my ex down. Bye. Am I the asshole for moving out when my parents asked me to pay rent? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 23, am the oldest of five siblings and I am a full-time student. I also have a part-time job in my field, but when I complete my degree, my employer will, will take me on full-time. I make enough for my part-time job to pay for school and put money aside. Mm -hmm. My siblings range from 20 to 10. Both of our parents work full-time. I've taken on a lot of the responsibilities for keeping everything running in the house. I do the grocery shopping, the laundry, as well as making suppers and doing meal prep so everyone has lunches ready to take every day. I also get all my siblings to do their part with regards to household chores. For example, my youngest brother is responsible for feeding and walking the dogs, so I make sure there is food, dog food in the storage and poop bags on the leash. Hmm. My dad works very long hours and my mom works 9 to 5 at a hard job. Over Christmas, I had a chance to buy a PS5 for myself, so I did. The rest of the family is still using a shared PS4. I keep mine in my room and I do not share. My parents started fielding complaints from my oldest brother about how I made so much money and I don't share the things that I buy myself for. Totally true. So they had a talk with me where they brought this up. I pointed out how much of the household work I did and they said that it wasn't fair that I was earning so much money without contributing. They told me how much they expected from me. I went to my room and did the math. If I gave them what they wanted, I would have about $800 left over. If I dropped a couple of classes next semester, I could go to almost full-time hours with my employer and it would only be one more year until I graduated with my second degree. But I could afford my own place and I would have way more free time and disposable income. I packed up and I moved out. Everything I own fit in my car. I stayed at an mm. Airbnb for two weeks until I could get everything sorted with an apartment, school, and work. It was great. I'm not going to lie, I may have gone a little overboard on Tinder. I couldn't have any women over to my house. I just moved into my own apartment. I'm working part-time until I finish the semester. I will work full-time over the summer and go to a lighter class load slash higher work hours in the fall. My oldest brother has been tasked by my parents to do everything that I used to do. His chores have been split up with the other three. They're all pissed at me for moving out. My parents are upset that I left them in the lurch. My siblings are mad at me that they all have more chores. My oldest brother is especially salty because he has no free time to see his girlfriend and she isn't allowed in the house when my parents aren't home. I'm enjoying my free time. I bought myself a plant from Ikea. I feel bad for screwing them all over, but it didn't make sense for me to do all the work and pay rent on top of it. Edit. All the chores were split fairly. I wasn't doing any more than anyone else. I thought it was fair until they also asked me for money as well. Am I the asshole? Story time why you should never forgive and be the one who got away. This is not my story, it was sent to me on my email. This story takes place when I was 17 until I was 21. I am now 30 years old, I have two kids, my husband, and we live in a big house. I come from a family of low income. My father wasn't in the picture and it was just my mother and me. Growing up, I watched my mother have different boyfriends. 
there was two boyfriends that cheated on her and she never got back with them. She had me when she was really young. My father ended up cheating on my mother and she never forgave my father. My father would randomly pop up at our house. Many times, my father broke into our apartment and he would leave my mother and me presents. My mother has to have at least 1,000 love letters from my father, asking for forgiveness, to take him back and that his life hasn't been the same ever since she left. My mother would let me visit my father and she would let me stay with him at his house. While my father would break into our house and leave jewelry and presents for my mother, my father was actually married to my stepmom, which is crazy. The thing is, I was too young to realize what was going on. My mother always kept quiet. She never told my stepmom what my dad was doing. My mother always told me that when I go visit my dad to tell my dad that she had a boyfriend, to never let my dad know that she was single. I did exactly that. My dad said if at any point my mother was to be single again, he would go back with her. That never happened though. My mom had boyfriends. They were all handsome and they all had money. All of them spoiled my mother with roses, presents, and they all loved me and spoiled me. So I grew up wanting the same respect for myself. The thing is, my mom had a lot of respect for herself, but that still didn't change our economic position. We lived in a low-income neighborhood, and the school that I went to was also a low-income school. I was in the ninth grade when I laid eyes on this senior. I've seen him before at school and I knew something about him. Not so much, but he hanged out with some of my classmates. They lived in the same neighborhood and they also played sports together. This high school was pretty small and I remember the first time I laid eyes on him, he did too. We both looked at each other and the rest was history. I remember I followed him on Instagram and he followed me back. I was the one who messaged him first and I remember the adrenaline, the rush, the fear, the emotions that were going through my body. I was so freaking nervous and I swear I loved him from the moment I seen him. It was love at first sight for me. After three days, we ended up hanging out. We dated for two years and he was the love of my life. He was a really nice guy, super sentimental, he cared for my feelings and I loved his body too. He was tall, he was so strong. I remember him telling me that he fell for my eyes, but little did he know I fell for his eyes too. They were so cute and big and they made me fall in love every time I would look at him. I kept this quiet and I never told him how much I loved him. I did my part, I played fair and I was loyal. Three years later, we get engaged. Not too long after that, I found out that he was messing with this girl I went to high school with and he got her pregnant. I never forgave him because I don't forgive. He ended up having a baby girl and he named the baby girl after me. He never stopped begging me. It's been eight years and every time on my birthday, he emails me. Betrayals like that, you don't forgive. I'm so thankful for my mother. She's the one who taught me to know my worth. I am now married to the true love of my life, have two beautiful, healthy children, and we all live very comfortable in a big house. I carried my own poop in my bag for nearly 10 miles. What an interesting time to take a sip of a freshly opened LaCroix. When I, 23 female, was 18, I had a summer job working as a cashier at a large supermarket. I spent most of my nights at my boyfriend's parents' home in a smaller town about a 20-minute drive away. And one morning, he wanted to wake and bake, and he didn't have work until the evening. And as I didn't have work until just after midday, I thought, fuck it, I'm going to do what Chris did and take a hit in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> I was trying to be so slick, not get you demonetized. I'm like doing downward dog under the table, just trying to get a puff. So we hit the bong and then went to the kitchen to have a full English breakfast. As I was this finishing- This is like my dream morning routine. This sounds great. <laughs> a full English breakfast, by the way, those get shit on way too much. Those beans, phenomenal. She says that. As I was finishing off my baked beans, I saw the time and realized I had just over 10 minutes to get the bus home and in time for work. So I ran to get my things and quickly used the bathroom. Room. Turns out I needed the biggest shit of my life, which was refusing to flush down his tiny ass toilet. I was running out of time till my bus and I had to think fast. My first thought was to wrap it in a toilet roll, which was a huge fail as it just absorbed the water and stuck to the poo. Yes, I had to pick it oh up God. with my hands. 
I was planning to wrap it up and put it in the bin next to the toilet. Did she just not want to like have her boyfriend see her shit? Yeah, but I immediately realized how disgusting that would have been. Next, I thought I should throw it out the window. <laughs> but what if it lands in the gutter? His bedroom is in the attic. Or even if it didn't, someone in his family would just go out there and just find a human poo on the garden floor. <laughs> I was really starting to panic at this point as I was so close to missing the bus, which would have meant being late for work. I was high as fuck, so I was freaking out oh, even more than I I usually would. Oh my god. And I couldn't think of any way out of the situation. When I checked my phone, I had no time left. So I grabbed a t-shirt out of my bag, one of my favorites, RIP, wrapped it around the giant shit and with wet toilet paper stuck to it, and ran downstairs to find my boyfriend waiting to say goodbye. He was probably wondering what was taking me so long. There was no way I'd be giving him a hug and a kiss with a whole poop in my bag. So I ran out the door shouting how I was going to miss my bus and reached the bus stop, which was fortunately right outside his house. Now, it was a sunny, hot day in July. I had a fat shit in my bag, and I was stood at the bus stop baked as a cake, freaking out about how everyone on the bus is gonna think I smell of shit, yeah. and how it's just gonna cook in my bag <laughs> because it was already so hot, and the little bus will be like an oven. But also, a t-shirt isn't like a plastic bag. It's just gonna get wet and shit covered and stain everything in your bag. Yeah, you, you should've just asked for a plunger. You should've just said, babe, take care of it. There was no way to discard my poop while I waited for the bus, and I barely had a minute till it arrived, so I couldn't just chuck a t-shirt full of poop outside my boyfriend's parents' home. And even if I did, my boyfriend would have known it was my t-shirt, and God forbid, pick it up thinking I'd dropped it by accident, dot dot dot. So I get on the hot, sweaty bus, high, paranoid, and certain everyone could smell the shit in my bag. And now I'm wondering how I'm going to talk to my mom when I get home when I'm super blazed and smell like shit. I get home and run straight upstairs and shout down that I'm going to be late for work. I jump in the shower, put on my uniform, and I'm immediately out the door, barely speaking to my mom. The supermarket I work at is about a 30-minute uphill walk from my house. I'm still high, it's really hot outside, and as I'm 10 minutes into the walk, I realize I still have a fucking shit in my handbag. My own fucking shit in my fucking handbag. I was so determined to avoid my mom and get to work, my high ass didn't even think to take it out and dispose of it in my mom's toilet. And now I'm nearly at Tesco and I still have poop in my bag. Unfortunately, the closest bin was right outside my work. So I put my whole bag in the bin and go to the staff room like nothing happened. I then spent the rest of the day scanning customers' groceries, traumatized about what I'd been up to. And I've had to live with this information all my life and have been too embarrassed to tell anyone. I guess I could have just told my boyfriend I couldn't fly. And didn't I have guess. <laughs> I guess. And didn't have time to wait for it. But we were still fresh in our relationship, and I couldn't stand the thought of him getting rid of my giant shit while I'm not even there. That seems <sighs> like best case scenario. Feels good to get that off my chest. Sorry for the long read. I mean, this isn't great of me to say. In that scenario, I would use the litter card. Am I wrong for buying my biological daughter a car, but not my stepdaughter? Before my daughter Christina, currently 19 female, started high school, I made her a deal that if she kept above a 3.9 GPA for her freshman through junior year, I would buy her a car up to $20,000 to have for her senior year, on the condition that if her GPA dipped below 3.9, I would take it away. She kept a 4.0 throughout high school, so I let her pick out a car before senior year. During her sophomore year, I met my now wife, Jenny, now 40 female, and her daughter, Emily, 17 female. Emily started her senior year a couple of weeks ago, and a few days ago, she texted me asking me when I was going to take her to go look at cars. This took me by surprise, as I didn't realize she expected a car. She has a 2.7 GPA and spends more time curating her Instagram than doing her homework. I explained to her that Christina received her car as a reward for good grades, not as a given. I later felt bad because I guess I didn't give her the same incentive that I gave Christina, and I told her that if she could get a 3.9 GPA with her senior year grades and get into an accredited college or university, I would let her pick a car upon graduation. I thought this was a fair deal, or even unfair towards Christina since I made her keep a 3.9 GPA for all four years of high school. But Jenny pulled me aside after Emily went to school and told me that I was being unfair since Emily had different circumstances than Christina. For background, Jenny's ex-husband and Emily's bio dad was a very wealthy man who spoiled the crap out of her. Everything she wanted, all she had to do was ask for. For the first 12 years of her life, 
She didn't try in school because her dad promised her he would get her into any college that she wanted and give her a job at his company afterwards. Then, when Emily was 12, her dad was arrested for serious tax fraud. Essentially, he is in prison now, and Jenny has some money on her own, but nothing compared to the life of luxury that they were both used to. I think Emily is very hurt by what happened, and she hasn't had the chance to develop a work ethic. I told Jenny that I think my only wrongdoing was to not help Emily develop a work ethic sooner, and that my hope is that she rises to the occasion, cleans up her act, and gets a car. I also said I would do everything I could to help Emily research colleges and perfect her application, but Jenny wasn't having it. She and Emily have both been giving me the cold shoulder the past couple of days and still think I'm treating Emily unfairly. I really don't know what to do. I want to give Emily a goal that is challenging but attainable. But at the same time, I don't want to put the strain on my relationship with my family. Is it normal that my father still hits me even as an adult? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. Send me on Instagram. When I was a kid and I got in trouble, my dad would hit me. I always knew to expect it, so it wasn't a really big deal. But of course, I would do my best to stay out of trouble. Sometimes he would use a belt and sometimes he would slap me across the face. The slapping was the worst part. From the ages of 10 to 12, I didn't really get hit because I never got in trouble. When I turned 14, things started getting rough. I wanted to date boys and my dad was not having it. So his form of punishment sometimes was even taking food away from me. This happened on two occasions when I was 14. 14 and I almost ran away because of it. I know most of you are thinking that my mom should have stepped in, but my mom was pretty afraid of my dad too. Sometimes I feel like my parents have brainwashed me into thinking that what my dad is doing is fine. The sad part is that I'm now 20 and my dad still hits me from time to time. I do have to say my father has always been there for me. He's provided me with a great life and a good education. And it's not like he would just hit me out of nowhere. It was only when I got in trouble and for specific reasons. But I do think he needs to stop it because I'm 20 now. Here's where things get really messy. I just got engaged and my fiance hates my father. Follow for part two. Is it normal that my father still hits me as an adult? Now that I'm 20 and engaged, I told my fiance about what my father did. Like I said, my father wouldn't just hit me out of nowhere. He would only do it when he was punishing me and for specific reasons. But my fiance loathes my father. He thinks it's abuse and that it wasn't a normal thing for me to have to endure as a child, especially as an adult. And I've only come to realize that what my dad is doing is probably wrong because of my fiance. Before that, I never had anybody in my life tell me that what my dad was doing was wrong. But here's what happened. My fiance and I were cooking in my parents kitchen my dad must have been in a really bad mood because he comes into the kitchen and says if you don't clean up this mess i'm gonna show your fiance how he slapped the shit out of you my father had never shown that side of him in front of my fiance but as soon as those words came out of my father's mouth my fiance turned to him and said you will never put your hands on her again and my dad said that's my daughter and i can do whatever i want my fiance asked me to leave with him and i did my mom called us and begged us to come back but my fiance said no part three is is it normal that my father still hits me as an adult after my fiance stood up to my dad we didn't speak to my family for about two months. That's when my fiance asked me to go to therapy. And I did. And that's when I found out that what I really needed to do was fix my relationship with my father. Because he had always punished me physically, I held a lot of resentment towards him. And my father being very antiquated, he thought that he was doing the right thing. Now let me clear a few things up. He only hit me twice when I was an adult. Once when I was 19, I got a bad grade in one of my classes and he flipped out. He slapped me across the face and told me that that would teach me to do better. The second time was right after my 20th birthday. I had gotten into an argument with my mom that really wasn't such a big deal. My mom and I worked things out, but my dad thought it was inappropriate that I spoke to my mom like that. Was I very disrespectful? No. But to him, it was completely unacceptable. So he hit me once with his belt. My fiance is refusing to invite my parents to our wedding. And to be honest, I kind of agree with him. Ever since stepping away from my parents, I have so much more confidence. I'm also happier in my relationship because I'm getting to be myself. And I'm not afraid that anyone will punish me. But I do feel guilty. I want to reach out to my parents. I'm not sure. What should I do? There was this girl in high school who I thought, you know, we were friends. Come to find out that when I found out my boyfriend at the time was cheating on me, that she was not only covering, but like, hey, that girl over there is really cute. Oh like, God. yeah, yeah. And so I just immediately like severed that. And then I, shortly after, um, I met Avery. So she, and the friends of the girl my ex cheated on me with went to Harris Teeter and got a cookie cake that said like prom question mark and they put it on my car. Oh my God. And um, I walked down to see her and all the friends of the girl my ex cheated on me with just like sitting in the bed of their truck, just like kind of watching. And like the girl like hops out, oh, 
was so fun. It looks like you have a secret admirer. Like, I guess you don't need to talk to that new guy anymore because, like, you have a secret admirer here who must really like you. So, like, you should definitely, like, drop him and see who your secret admirer is. Like, just trying to convince me that I, I don't need to talk to this new guy anymore. Story time. I fought with this girl and I almost didn't graduate. This is not my story. It was sent to me on my Instagram. I was in high school and I was currently a senior. Let's just say in ninth grade, I didn't do my best in high school. I decided that in ninth grade, I wanted to change things up. I spoke to my counselor and he told me that I was not going to be able to graduate. I went to him wanting to take an elective. He said I had no chance to take electives. I went to my art teacher, spoke to him, and he said the same thing. I was really sad and I wanted to cry. I felt like a freaking loser. I was really thinking about my whole life and I knew I had to do something. Well, I took a lot of AP classes. I repeated a lot of English and math classes and it was very hard because I had a boyfriend. I couldn't spend a lot of time with him and I couldn't see my family too. My family was very proud of me though. The whole school year I had to stay after school and it was the toughest thing in my life. I had an ex who was a different race. He was black. My ex was super attractive, tall, and he was part of the soccer team. I swear, he was so fine. Sometimes I would question why I broke up with him. He was completely immature and that was the reason why I broke up with him. He lost his V-card to me, but he was not good at it. His private part smelled so bad. <laughs> I just had to say it. This guy never got over me. He shared to me that I was his first girlfriend and I took his V-card. After that, he was going after all of the Latinas in school. I wasn't mad at him. He was also a senior and I noticed that he had a girlfriend who was in ninth grade. This girl wasn't Latina, she was a light-skinned American. After we broke up, a couple months later, he had a lot of Latina girlfriends. They would all stare at me. And I swear to God, every time on Facebook, I would come across them as people you may know. I was just knowing they were lurking through my stuff. My ex didn't delete some of our pictures and I was tagged in it. Well, I was really over him. I don't know why. He was literally so fine, but I just never had that urge to go back to him. He never left me alone on social media. Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, he had me as a friend. And he always wanted to talk to me. There's times where I didn't want to be mean to him, so I would just casually say hi. Talk to him for a couple of minutes. And every time, I noticed that I had him wrapped around my finger. We were in senior year, and I guess he was with this light-skinned girl. We both had an art class, but different times. I took it around 8 o'clock, and then she was next. Every time I would leave class and she would come in, she would mad dog me. I never paid her any attention. One, because it took me a long time to get here where I am. Second, because I didn't like her boyfriend. Third, because I was on my way to college and I didn't care about petty drama. A couple weeks go by and I'm in my art class getting out. I see my ex and I start a casual conversation. Just saying, hi, how are you? Hope you've been good. As I leave, I hear his new girlfriend say, please don't talk to her again before you catch a disease. My blood started boiling. I turned around and said, what the fuck did you say? She started getting rowdy and my ex was insane shit. This pissed me the fuck off. I went up to her and told her what's up. At this point, I had a lot of people that have been trying me, but I haven't done shit because I wanted to graduate. I was just really done. I went back and I told her what's up. She had something to say. Don't wait for me to walk away and say it in front of my face. She kept talking to herself, nagging to my ex, and my ex told me to just back off, to just turn around and walk away. He was literally acting like a dick, and I pushed him and told him to fuck off, to not act brand new. His girlfriend pulls my hair, and this is when we start getting physical. I punched her right in her nose, and I was just going off. Yes, I did give her a whooping. All of the school was there, the teacher separated us, and some of the security guards. I was so fed up. I went to the principal's office, and he was so mad at me. But he was way more pissed off at the other girl. My principal knew about me, and he knew how much work I've put in to graduate. The principal and vice principal had a meeting, and I swear to God, it took them two months to decide whether I was going to graduate and walk. Well, guess what? I ended up graduating with honors. I had a 3.9. I ended up graduating in white, which is honors. But it was really hard, and of course, I regret fighting the girl. 
I never know what happened to the girl. She stayed far away from me, never crossing my path. My ex still looks for me, and I still have him on all social media. He's still been trying to take me out.